Hi everyone. So, uh, the calculated field we have understood uh, in, in, in our last uh, video. Okay. So now let's next move it forward. Okay. So, so these are the field properties which we have understood in our last video. Now, what next? Okay. Disable sort. In our field level, we have a property called disable sort. Now, this disable sort is if we are making any field disable sort as true, then what it will happen is there will be no, uh, we cannot sort on that particular field. Okay. Now, coming to force active. Force active is a concept. Okay. Now, let's understand this force active. What happens uh, in this force active? Okay. So, before that, what we will do is, we will understand what, what it is exactly. Now, we know that the object manager actually prepare a vendor specific SQL in the backend. Okay. Like the application object manager, what happens whenever we, we do something in the UI, to fetch the data, we prepare a couple of query from the database okay now whenever we prepare a query it is not like we will fetch all the bc field it only fetch those fields which are actually exposed in the ui okay so this is this is the example of query which a sql generates okay so this is kind of sql statements it is generate in the back end okay so we will be finding lot of sql statements when it runs in the backend. Now what happened is like whenever we generate this SQLs, the SQLs which are getting generated or the columns which are getting only are the columns which are exposed to the UI. Okay. Now let's say we went to account screen. Now in the account screen I have 20 number of fields. So if we have 20 number of fields then all those 20 number of columns will be get exposed or will be get prepared by the um, data manager that is will it will it will fetch each only those 20 number of columns now assume that i required some other column value so how i can fetch that okay or how i can add my extra column in that particular sql statement okay so that is what we are making the field force active or column that we are making that particular field as force active so that it will get added in that particular SQL statement so that when it is fetching the data in case of 20 now let's say I, I want two more columns so I can I can do it in case of 20 I want 22 so what it will do is what we can do is in the field level we will be having a property called force active and if we will make that field force active then that two field will be will be get added in the SQL statement which is generated by the data manager okay so that is called force active so force active is to is to add that uh, table is to add that uh, particular column under our SQL statement now question arises is uh, how like it, it is like we can add n number of or any any column we are having we can add it and make it force active but it is not recommended why because the more column we will be fetching from the database the more slowness we will feel okay so that's why it is not recommend that you apply all the fields which are not exposed in the UI and you want to add it in the SQL statement. Just go and uh, make all the fields active. It is not recommend because the it will impact the performance. The slowness will happen every time it fetches the data. Like uh, it is, it is. Let's say example, you are uh, like somebody is asking you to bring a glass of water or one liter of water bottle or and bring a 30 liter of water bottle so the more you are bringing the performance will be degraded so similarly if we are asking Sybil to more data to fetch from the database the performance will be get degraded okay so that's why we, we 
it is not recommend that you make all the field for selected as and when it is required or it is important to fetch that column value in that case we can make the for selected true and if it is not exposed in the ui if it is exposed in the ui anyway it will be get added by the data manager if it is not exposed in the ui and do you want to fetch that uh, column value that case we can make that field for selected is it clear fine now let's move next what we have next so the next is force case okay we can make a field force case that upper case lower case first upper case like this we can make the force case in the field okay so force case is possible in the field level so we have a property now pre default value post default value okay now what is pre default value that is post default but we need to understand so pre default value is like whenever we are creating a new field during that time if i want to populate a default value that i can give in the pre default value now let's say i am creating a service request every time the service request will get created the value i want to populate is initiated okay so every time whenever we will create a new record this status value will be auto populated as initiated that is called pre default value now what is post default value post default value is something like whenever we are going to save a record in the database and if that column value or if that field value is didn't entered by the user like if that field is null then only during say going to save into the database that time it will take the post default value so the pre default value is it will be auto populated like it will be having value in the field and post default is if we don't have any value and we are going to save that data into the database during that time post default value will get reflected now sometimes people ask tricky question in the interview question they ask okay if i have a field value like same field i have pre default value as a and post default value as b so which value it will it will reflect in the database because i have a pre default value as a so whenever i'll i'll be creating a record the field will be having a value as a and if we save this it will get saved into the database as a okay so post default value will not come into picture post default value will come into picture in which case if we populate the like a pre default value is showing as a and the user is removing that value making it null and then trying to save this data then during that time the b value will get saved into the database because we have nullified it now the field is null so when we will try to save this data it will go and save as a post default value okay now read only read only is nothing but we can make a field read only so that no one can edit this field required we can make this field as mandatory so that uh, people cannot like people have to enter a value in the this field else they cannot uh, save this record now type type is something what kind of data type this field is belongs to if it is the uh, text it is boolean it is the uh, number is it it is date time so what kind of data do which data type this will belong to that we can provide okay. so these are the field level properties we can see under the bc field now moving to next okay this is join so in my if uh, if you didn't understood the join please go back and see my previous video uh, this part one of uh, this bc join so there you can find it what is join i have i have already explained in in elaborately okay you please go to the previous video and have a look okay yeah so in the join there is there is, we have to provide the table name we have to provide the source field we have to provide the resistance surface so these are the three things now uh, will 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 be we have to provide okay now the civil query language okay now here something we have to understand okay so if we will see in the tools level there are certain syntax we follow okay now let's say i went to this place see in the calculated field we are writing something in the 
next first day we are writing something okay now in the so we are actually following certain syntax to make people understand here we are writing parent colon then something we are writing okay so actually in the seabell to make seabell understand we follow a proper syntax or we follow a proper writing okay like let's say in english we follow a grammar okay so like this in seabell we probably follow a particular syntax or we follow a particular language that we call it as seabell query language so this is the basic basic uh, language we have to understand to interact with seabell okay now what are those things let's understand okay now in case of seabell query language how we can write let's say we are referring a field okay wherever we will refer a field inside seabell we have to write within square bracket okay so so that seabell will understand if something is written in the bracket means it is actually a field okay it will refer that field now let's say i want to get the today's value so i can get today like this so that it will give me the system date time stamp it will give me the today's date al along with the time stamp the system time or the server time which whatever time it is currently that value it will give me if expression now in the if expression there are three parts the first part will be like after if there will be a bracket then the first part is the condition then if satisfying then the first part like condition satisfying means do this else condition is not satisfying do that okay so expression return one return two if satisfying then return one if not satisfying return two so these are these are the if expression we can we can see in the, in the like, or we can write in the civil query language now similarly parent field value you can get the let's say I, we are currently at uh, parent uh, and child bc and we are present in the child bc i want to get a field from the parent so i can get my parent field value okay so that is called parent field value you can you can write it like this now if null if null is the expression where you can provide if field value is null then do this okay so that we can write in if null now length we can get the length of the field what is the field? length of this particular field we can get it so we can write length within bracket the field okay so then it will tell me that what is the length of the field it, it, it will give me expression like the output of this field will be the number and it will provide me what what is the length of that particular field now coming to string concatenation we can add two different string or two different field by providing plus symbol okay now let's say there is a field there is a field i have which i want to uh, save it as a name full name okay now full name i can give first name plus last name if i'll give first name plus last name what it will do is first name is a string let's say sushil now last name is just string let's say behera now the result it will give me is first name followed by last name no space no nothing okay now i want to add a space then what i can do i can i can enter with a double string okay double quote blank space so that will consider as a blank, um, like one space and that will be considered as a string so now here I have three string. One is first name, whatever field name I am having. Then give a space means this space is a string, and after that write last name. So three string we are we are concatenating first name plus double quote plus double last name. So this is how we can concatenate different field value. Now lookup value. This is I will be explaining in the pick list. Okay, when, when we'll understand the pick list, static pick list, dynamic pick list, during that time I will be explaining this this ex expression. Okay. Now moving to next. Okay. So these are the BC behavior. Okay. So like the field I have. Okay. So similarly like the field properties i have similarly bc properties i have okay 
So what are those BC properties? The basic things we have understood from the very beginning that every BC will be having a table property where we will be providing the table. Okay. Now search specification, we can put a particular search specification and always search specification is written in the Siebel query language. Okay. So this is the filter criteria we can put so that we can we can fetch the data in a particular particular uh, filter criteria okay so that that's what uh, in the search specification we took so that that bc will be showing us only those records which we, we want not all the record present in the database okay that is called search specification search specification is nothing but it is like it will tell us in which order we want to see the record let's say i want to see the record which is recently created so you can sort a order of created recently okay or i want to see the record in alphabetical order name name alphabetical order so it will show me the record which are created today and it will show me with alphabetical order so a record will be on top b record will be second c record will be third like this okay so those those sort specification i can i can cover now these are couple of edit uh, properties we have okay no delete no insert no must no update if we are making these properties true then no one can edit that particular record let's say no delete no one can delete this record no insert no one can create any record okay so these are different different properties owner delete owner delete is something like whoever created this record they can only delete this record other people cannot delete this record giving you an example now sales executive okay so they have target they have to give five number of uh, customer per day or they have to give uh, 30 number of customer per month so like this they have target okay assume that agent b okay agent a agent b there are two agent agent a collected one customer information he created a record now agent b he collected less customer and he want to create some customer which are created by A. Okay. So what he can do, he can take the record, he can delete this record and he can name, he can create with his name. So that his target will get fulfilled. Okay. So this can be possible. So to avoid this kind of situation, civil provided us if we are making the uh, making the BC record, BC field property as owner delete, then whoever created, let's say agent one created this record. So agent 1 will able to create this record, delete this record, agent 2 will not able to delete this record. Okay. So that is called owner delete. Now class, class is something it is specified to define a particular BC. Okay. So it is like or there are lot of BCs we have and to segregate all those BCs they have given a CSS class format. Okay. So that class actually it they have defined to segregate okay this bc belongs to this class this bc belongs to this class so those things it explained in the class okay class we will understand when we will understand the bbc bc during that time we will we'll, we'll go detail into more detail in the class okay so so for today we are keeping this much okay so in the previous previous video and this video includes the bc field and its properties okay now the next class we will be understanding will be the link link is also important part okay so here we have understood the join we have understood field so how we can create a join what how we can establish a join and how we can pull the data so those things we have understood in this part now the next part will be will be understanding the link okay link how how to relationship between two different bc what are the different type of link like one one is to m and m is to m so how we are going to create a link so all those things will be understanding in our next videos okay thank you thank you for uh, watching my video okay you people can uh, do share like comments anything any topic you want to understand very soon i am going to start the eai part okay so we will we'll, we'll be seeing more videos in coming days okay thank you thanks a lot